Hey, everybody. We're back with the author of Too Much and Never Enough, Mary Trump. When, when, I, uh, when, I, when I read the things that like, you're saying, but in, in the book, I think, well, well this, is, this is sort of self-evident, self-evidently true, not that I knew all these things, but self-evidently true when I read them because of you can see the behavior of the president right now. I've, I've said to other people before is that in some ways Donald Trump is a boring figure because he is so readable. His yeah. motivations seem so transparent. There doesn't yeah. seem to be a second layer that you're missing. It's not three-dimensional chess. It's, mm -hmm. it's, ju it's just checkers the entire time. Yeah. Because the rest of us can see it so clearly, and you and the family know some of these motivations for this, the, this these personality traits, do you think everybody else in your family also sees it but just decides to never say anything? I think that, uh, you know, it's it's impossible for me to know the extent to which uh, they see beyond the facade. But do they ever say anything to you like, look, 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 we know, we know, but please don't say anything? Um, you know, I, I haven't had any conversations with, with some people uh, in my family, but others, yeah, uh, they're aware. Um, but they're all sort of tied together in ways that would make it impossible to breach um, what they would consider uh, family loyalty. So none of them will ever say anything. Um, you, you, in the book, you compare President Trump to Frankenstein's monster, which I mean, Frankenstein is a certain extent uh, a sympathetic figure. Yeah. To what degree is, is the president uh, a victim as well as a villain? I think if we, if we look simply at what he experienced at his, as a child. We should have a great deal of compassion for what that child experienced, witnessed, and suffered. Um, however, that having been said, Donald is an adult human being who understands the difference between right and wrong. Um, he doesn't think that, that the rules apply to him, but he understands them. Um, and that we don't need to have uh, compassion for, and uh, it certainly doesn't mean that we don't have to hold him accountable. You gave the New York Times financial records from your grandfather's estate suit. Um, uh, it was a, a in-depth, uh, I believe, series of articles. The New York Times, which I'm not mistaken, won the Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. Why did you give them those? What did you think the public had the right to know? The, the main reason I did, at least initially, was because uh, Suzanne Craig, investigative journalist extraordinaire, was so persistent and was able to convey to me that I actually had information that could help in a concrete way, which I didn't realize. I'd totally forgotten those documents existed. You know, it had been the, the lawsuit through which I got them had been almost 20 years in the past. So I had no idea. So, so having something tangible and finally feeling like I could do something that would make a difference convinced me uh, to make that leap. The reason I felt it was in, important for that story to come out, even though honestly, there was no way to know what the story would be uh, because we didn't know it was in the documents yet, was because I felt that in, in 2016, a lot of voters didn't have all of the information they needed to make an informed decision. And I wanted to do whatever I could uh, to change that. What treatment do we need? What therapy do we need as a nation to honestly address what's happening to us? I think one of the first things that we need to do is ensure um, that people that we first of all find out um, all of the things that have been done in the last three years uh, to get us where we are today, which is a very dark place, um, and particularly in regards to uh, COVID-19, but certainly stretching back to the very beginning um, and you know the situation at the border and the incarceration and kidnapping essentially of children. And when we find out we need to hold people accountable, which is something that this country is very bad at doing. Have you ever seen your uncle be held accountable for anything? He's never, and that's the problem. When you're not, when you, when you are not held accountable, when people fail to hold you accountable, 
the message is I can keep doing what I'm doing. And the message Donald gets is that he can also double down. And mm -hmm. he keeps getting away with it. Um, were you frightened at all to publish this book about retaliation for having done so? No. Uh, I mean, I, I expect that there will be retaliation. Um, but my, I felt an obligation to do this and that, that outweighed all other, other, all other considerations and, you know, I'm, I'm taking necessary precautions. Um, but no, I, I'm not, I don't feel fear at all. We have to take another break, but stick around everybody. We'll be back with more of the author of too much and never enough, Mary Trump.